Okay. Here we go. So um, this update uh, has some nice UI stuff that people have been asking for since like years ago. Um, and I'm gonna probably demo this a few times through the through the stream. But basically now uh, we we could before we could do like this to make the thing narrow. Oh, that's weird. Um, but now we can also go tall like this and make it like an L shape. And if depending on which side you are, you you can you know flip it like that. do one of these actions. So this is nice for a phone if you're in portrait mode and you know you want your UI to be off to the side or, or actually maybe it makes more sense for horizontal mode um, or sorry landscape mode but I don't know it's just another option. I know some some people like to work this way. And then there's been a lot of tiny little fixes. Uh, th there were some weird like pink glitches that were happening um, with imported images, so, so that's been fixed. And then also clipping, there were some small bugs with clipping that have been fixed and merging and all that stuff. So yeah, just housekeeping and getting everything tidy. They're, they're sort of like uncommon things that might come up, but better now. Um, we still have the mirroring going, I think. One thing that's been fixed is, is you weren't able to, um, I guess, freeze the mirror or, you know, make it so that you could draw on one side. So that's been fixed now. And the way you do that is by adding another layer and uh, putting this new layer underneath and then you get your your mirrored layer and you say merge down and then now you can draw on it normally again because that converts it into a, a Im image basically um, the only issue is you don't have any history on that anymore but you could go back and make it mirrored again if you want but Anyway, flexibility there. Hello, Alex. How are you doing? All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this. Oh, actually, I can't delete the last layer. Let me just delete that. Oh, another thing that's been added is anti-aliasing option. So if you go up to the top here, you'll see this anti-aliasing option, which it's hard to notice here, but let me uh, let me do some smudging for you real quick. So this is with anti-aliasing off, and it's pretty gritty. This is how it was before, and um, this is what people actually want for pixel art or any kind of super low res stuff, because you want the sometimes you want each pixel to be very defined and sharp, crispy. But now we can go up here and turn on anti-aliasing. Oh wait, that's with anti-aliasing on? Shoot. Well, anyway, hopefully you can see the difference through the compression of the stream, but it's it's pretty slight. It's not super smooth, but at least it's a tiny bit smooth. Um, all right, let me... Another fix has been the uh, color box. Before, it, when you went all the way to the top, it would get really choppy and weird. Um, it would it would kind of like freak out when you get all the way to zero saturation up here. So that's been fixed. So it's nice and smooth up here. 
So yeah, we're just getting into nitty gritty, nitpicky stuff now, and fixing little by little everything. Good, gotta paint more. Are you painting along on the stream? Let's paint this doggo with me. I've been starting to see a little bit more um, animal paintings on, on the heavy paint hashtag, so that's been fun. <laughs> more goofy stuff. Oh yeah, added in this pencil tool. Um, I think it looks looks pretty cool. Also changed the undo redo icons back to the old versions because um, I don't know the circles to me were sort of hard to to see from far away. These I feel like are, are more direct and, and easier to parse, I guess. Yeah, remapping hotkeys is not in yet, but you can easily uh, do it with um, auto hotkey or some kind of hotkey remapping software. Um, for Windows, auto hotkey is probably the best one. I don't know if what the standard one for Mac and Linux is, but yeah, I would recommend doing that for now until until that gets sorted. And auto hotkey is really useful for other things too. You can make your own little um, macros and stuff. To you can make little, um, I guess you would call consider them like little mini programs, even if you're using Photoshop or something to. You know, if you if you catch yourself redoing the same thing over and over, you can make a little hot auto hotkey script, and it'll can do it for you. Okay, the nose here has to be way, way bigger. So, I'm no longer used to where the eyedropper is <laughs> anymore. So, I'm kind of stumbling a bit. Oh, another thing that changed is um, I moved the... Uh, before when you clicked on the color circle you would get the uh, opacity mode. But I feel like that might be confusing for, especially for newer users, so I've moved the opacity mode into the actual tool settings down here. Um, and then also when you click on the circle you get the tool settings anyway. So. I don't know. I, I also debated having, uh, ha when you click on here, it could be also be eyedropper, but I think that could potentially be confusing for uh, for a brand new user too, because you click on that and then like your color changes and then you don't know what's going on. We'll see. I really wish I could, you know, go out and test it with people, but. Uh, uh, eventually I'll figure it out. Hey Bruce, how's it going? to here. Working with uh, vertical UI today because I guess this doesn't really matter on desktop but for mobile 
Sometimes people like the vertical UI more. I guess it's more like a uh, Photoshop style. What if we alpha lock this and then try to blend it? Kind of enjoying working sideways. This feels like a school exercise or something where they make you draw. Sometimes they make you draw with your non-dominant hand, or they make you draw, like, you know, with blind contour where you can't even see what you're drawing, or just put some kind of handicap on your drawing, so it hopefully helps you become, like, prepared for any situation, you know. <laughs> This vertical is so weird. I'm not used to where everything is now. Feels really weird. Un unnatural. <laughs> Unholy. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's the idea, just to m make it so that you're not, um, you don't have any preconceptions about the shape that you're drawing, you, you're just like, you're just making a bunch of abstract shapes, um, or that's, that's the idea, I guess. So you're just purely looking at proportions and shapes instead of saying like, oh, that's a dog, I know how to draw a dog, it's like this. just roughly put this together today too so I'm not sure if this like if the color wheel and everything should have a background to it I kind of like that it's floating over here because you can act you can compare your color to the to the actual color of the canvas here you know if you're like trying to match you know match the pink or whatever Yeah, so anyway, this can go real wide too, if you want it. It's kind of weird. Like that, or you can go narrow. You can do too wide, like Photoshop style. And I guess also stretch out your color box to get more, more resolution out of it, or more, you know, sensitivity here. That's kind of cool.
Hey Goku, um, how do you make the palette UI transparent? Uh, it's transparent by default, it should be. This is a new version, it's not out yet, but th this is the vertical version, so you can do like this and make it vertical. But uh, I haven't put in the hiding yet. I think maybe the next version will have that. But I'm not sure about the hiding though, because what would you hide? Would you hide everything, or only the tools, or only the colors, or or just all the UI becomes hidden? Uh, I don't know which way would be more use useful. All UI. But then how would you like change your colors and stuff? You just don't need to change color. Is it, it would be only for drawing, right? Another option, if if your UI is getting in the way, you can just change the UI scale, make it smaller. Um, let's see if this actually works. have a pretty tiny UI if you need it. I think I'm going to have it so that it just stays like, I don't like this flipping here. I'm going to change that so it just stays in the direction that it is until you reach the border. This is like sniping. Yeah, uh, uh, auto color picker probably come back eventually. I have mixed feelings about that one because I, I feel like it would be it's nice for design if you're trying to just like chop chop some shapes out, but it's really bad for painting because it's like eyedropper. It's it's the bad part about eyedropper times ten because you just like never picking colors then. Um.
Oh yeah, airbrush has been improved a little bit um, to be a little faster by using a smaller texture. I think going back through the textures that I made originally, some of them are way too big and they're just needlessly um, detailed to the point where it actually makes stuff uh, run slower. So I've been slowly like going back through and toning some of them down a little bit, the ones that are a bit extra. Because, um, I mean, at least for me, I haven't really noticed any, you know, resolution, like not looking at every single little pixel with a magnifying glass. Um, so I'd rather have the speed than the ultra high res. Although, maybe there could be some way where there's two sets of textures like a high res and a low res version where the low low res one is, is used for painting for the speed and then when you render it out it, it switches to the high res that, that might be a cool feature in the future What is the optimal texture size? I would say the smallest you can get away with. Like the, for example, the, this square texture is actually 12 pixels by 12 pixels, which I don't know why it's 12 pixels by 12 pixels. It should be, theoretically, it should be one pixel by one pixel because it's just one, like this can be described in one pixel. But um, yeah, so it's tiny. And that's why this one runs really fast. But then some of the other ones like this one are, I mean, it's not really that noticeable. It depends on your computer too. Um, some textures clog up a little bit. But the airbrush one was definitely one of those ones that was chunk, you know, chunky because it, it's just a giant texture. So I'm trying to, I, I've, I've reduced it a little bit. But yeah, I mean, some of these things I don't really notice on my desktop computer because it's, it's pretty fast. But then if I use it on, um, you know, the old, old, older laptop, then it, you start to see all the, uh, performance issues on there.
Some of mine are 800. Uh, no, 800 is good, I think, too. Like, um, I have, I mean, most, a lot of the textures in here are over 1024 by 1024, so don't worry about it. And I think the ones that you have here are running pretty smoothly, at least on my computer, so. Um, well, one, another thing to keep in mind, too, it doesn't really matter too much, but um, this engine that we're using supposedly likes power of two textures more. So a power of two would be something like, you know, two, four, uh, wait, wait, 16, 32, 256, 512, 1024, you know, like the regular computer numbers. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Like if you're going to make a, a texture that's near a thousand, then just make it a thousand twenty four because um, that'll run faster, I think, or it'll just be optimized. Um, and it, I mean, it doesn't, it's not a hard uh, limit, I guess. It just, apparently that's what these game engines like, like more. But reg regular numbers work fine too. Like at least they load and they work. I feel like I'm making such a mess with these um, smudges, but it's pretty fun though. Alright, let me get into the, the eyes. I love drawing eyes. Maybe because I like, I just like drawing shiny stuff. And usually the eye is the only chance to do that on a, something that's not a car or a machine. And I just have so much practice doing shiny stuff that I just enjoy it. And there's so many colors in the eye too. Before you even get to the highlights, there's like these uh, reddish, purplish things. I'll try to make it more purpley. And even within the blacks, there's a lot of you know, variation too. gotta go all out for these just gotta make sure they don't look like bird poop by keeping them pretty tiny
the on the other side there's a little bit of reflection too. are like jewels kind of so much stuff going on in a tiny little space and then save the black for just the very end I love how big this nose is. direction I don't think these highlights over here are as bright as the ones on the other side. They seem like more mid-tones, at least these ones here. That's another thing you gotta 
watch out for in terms of bird poop because if you make everything white it's gonna flatten out kind of see like everything it's too much so in this case there's only like there's only one part that's actually white and then everything else is maybe 70 60 or so maybe yeah I think about about there maybe even less 50 trick is to not make these too big like I think right now I'm already screwing it up by trying to add more like a teardrop shape and then also even though it's, it's it looks like a dot from afar it's actually got a shape to it you know so to prevent it from looking like poop like just a splat of poop you you should actually make the shape match, you know, a teardrop shape, whatever shape this thing is. Same thing over here, like this, this is an ovalish, but it has a, there's a difference between an oval that's like a regular oval and one that's more biased to the side. I don't know if that makes sense. Like an oval like this versus an oval well, this is not an oval anymore. It's more like a sunflower seed or a teardrop or something. But this will help make it look less like poop as well, I think. Giving it a bit of a shape. It would be great if I zoom out from this and it, looks like, it totally looks like poop. too too detailed on here. I need to calm down. Zoom out, calm down. To me this also looks like it's got a gradient from the bottom. Like from down here to the top it, it goes from darker to lighter. So maybe I need to do one of those gradients from the bottom up. And then let me see if I can find any more. Like from here, from the right to the left is a bit of a gradient as well. We could use use this one. And then the same thing over here. I don't know, I think that's okay. Also this shadow coming from the, um, this this line here I don't think is the actual like border of the eyeball. This is a, to me looks like a cast shadow. So that's why it's so straight here because it's not the actual shape of the, of the ball. And then this transition here from the dark to the to the fur is way too sharp here on mine. It looks like a robot. So I need to try to blend it somehow. Either by um, putting in some extra colors there or smudge or something like that. Hey Mike J, thank you. 
devices are just another option for you guys. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is a weird one. Let me try to blur the edges here a little bit. I feel like basically none of the edges are crispy except for the eyeball stuff. So I'm just going around and trying to smudge everything a tiny bit. Maybe blur is better, better tool for this. Yeah, Charlie, this vertical UI, the way it works is you, you can just drag your UI like that. And then when you go up against an edge, it'll bump it to the other side. Actually, yeah, it's not exactly working how I want it, but when you go to the edge, it should bump. And, uh, and then the, the regular UI still works the same. Or it, it still works the same. I'm going to fix all these little, like, weird jumpy things like that. But um, let's see. But yeah, the UI is getting more flexible now. Which is a good thing, I think. Because then people can use it however they want. There's not really any set way to do it, hopefully. Um, all right, let me save this. What do you call this? Dog selfie. Experts are working. Um, yeah, this version is not up yet, guys. It will be probably tonight sometime. Where'd it go? Da -da -da -da. Selfie. Happy with this for the amount of time we spent on it. It's a fun little painting. 
didn't have to do too much redrawing, which is nice. Um, okay, I'm going to work on tidying up all the little weird things I, I saw just now and um, get this thing out. And also, I am going to be putting out the Android layers. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be taking the Android version out of beta soon. I think it's pretty much ready. I haven't got that much feedback from Android people um, using the beta, but uh, I don't know. I guess that means it's everything is working fine. <laughs> like as long as nobody's complaining, like ah, everything is on fire, then maybe it's all working okay. But I guess um, if you guys have any problems with the Android beta, you know, send me an email or whatever, right on the Discord bug uh, bug channel otherwise I'm gonna just gonna put it up for the next version um, okay guys have a good day um, I'll see you next time <laughs>